Let's take a look now at how we can use the sharpening controls in Adobe Lightroom to give our photographs a little bit of extra tack sharpness. Now, it should be mentioned first that sharpening in Lightroom and in any other program for that matter is not refocusing. You've got to take a sharp in focus picture into the computer in order to use sharpening effectively. The whole goal with sharpening as we're going to show it here is just to make up for some of the shortcomings of your camera and lens and some of the blurriness that they introduce into the equation. We basically want to return the subject back to a level of sharpness that it was before all that light passed through the glass and hit the sensor and lost a little bit of its tack sharpness. So let's take a look. The first thing we want to do is identify what the most important detail in the photograph is. In this case here, I'm going to use the mountain lion's face as my example. And what I want to do is I want to zoom in to one to one over the mountain lion's face. Now, to zoom in to one to one, the easiest way to do that is in the navigator panel on the left hand side. At the very top there, there are the different zooming levels. And we want to make sure that we are on the one colon one in the upper left hand corner. That gets us zoomed into the correct level. I'm going to go ahead and hide my left hand panel now because we don't need it for the rest of this. So we get zoomed in to that close detail. Now, one of the biggest things we want to avoid is over sharpening. Over sharpening is something that a lot of people who are just beginning do. And we really want to try to avoid that because it can really make things look strange in the picture. So if we want to avoid over sharpening, the workflow that I like to use is very, very simple. We really only need two of the sliders that Lightroom gives us. What we want to do is come down to the detail panel in Lightroom. And we're going to start with the amount slider. And what you want to do with amount is start by taking it all the way down and all the way up and see what the range of sharpness that we have to work with is. So let me bring it down here. We can see down all the way things get a little bit softer. And if we bring it all the way up, things look very stark and crisp and overdone. It looks very, very weird. It's not a good look at all. Okay. So we want to bring it through the extents and you want to do this in the photo to kind of shock your eyes into getting used to seeing what the image would look like with the maximum amount of sharpening. I, I do this on every single picture because it's good to give yourself a little idea on what you're working with. Now I'm going to bring it back down to zero. And then what you want to do is you want to slowly increase the amount until the details in the image just pop. There's going to be a point where all of a sudden you're like, oh, wow, it just got sharp. Amazing. And as soon as that happens, stop dragging the slider. So we're going to start here at zero and we'll slowly bring it up. And let's see, uh, right about there, right about 45 or 50, the details just snapped in. They just happened to get sharper, which is awesome. And that's where we want to leave it. Now, if you get to 150, which is the maximum amount and that pop hasn't happened yet, take it back down to zero and start again and see whether you can find that pop. If you're not seeing the details pop and you're getting all the way up to the full sharpening amount, it probably means that the original photo that you're, that you brought into Lightroom wasn't in focus. You actually didn't take a sharp picture to start with. Again, you've got to start with a sharp image in order to use sharpening effectively. It's just to add additional sharpness to an already sharp photograph. So I'm going to leave them out there at 50. Now radius, I've done a lot of work with radius. Radius to me does not do that much. The default of 1.0 has been good for most everything I've ever needed to do. So I usually skip over that one in my sharpening workflow. Now detail, detail is very simple. I would start by taking it all the way down and all the way up just to see with what you're working with here. The detail slider is very simple, a low detail means that only the major edges in the photograph get sharper. So major edge would be an example would be the edge between a bright sky and a dark horizon, something like that. That's a very major edge, very contrasty, very main in the photograph. As you increase the detail, smaller and smaller details in the photo and edges in the photo start to get sharpened. And what you want to do is you want to get the detail as high as possible, which means as many small details are getting sharpened as possible. You want to get it as high as possible without the noise, which is the smallest detail you can have becoming sharper. And I think you'll notice on your own screen, it's hard to see in this video, but if we take detail at zero, we can see that there's very little noise in the background of the image. If we increase it all the way to a hundred, all of a sudden, all of these background areas like the grasses back here to the left and to the right get noisy. And that's not that they weren't noisy before they were, 
But with a high detail, those noisy areas are actually getting sharper. The computer is sharpening the noise, which is not what we want. So what I like to do is I like to take detail down all the way, start it at zero, and I want to get it as high as I possibly can without the noise getting sharper. Now some people prefer to hold down the Alt key or the Option key on a Mac when they take up the detail. And that can kind of give you this little weird, interesting gray view that for some people is really helpful and I, I really like it. So let's see, let's start zero here. In the background I don't see any main little pieces of noise. We increase it, increase it, increase it. And right about there, the noise is starting to come through, right about 30. Now, these numbers are gonna vary vastly camera to camera and photo to photo. So I can't really give a ballpark for this, but we can clearly see, if I take it back down to zero here, there's no noise in the background getting sharper. And then we increase it and we can see at maximum, all the noise in the background is sharp, but right about 30, I think is as high as we can go without the noise getting sharper in the background. And that's what we're looking for. And that's where I would leave it now. Now, the masking slider is number four, the fourth one. And the masking slider can be used to completely turn off the sharpening in certain areas of your photograph. Now in an image like this where there's a lot of texture and a lot of detail, we wouldn't really want to use that. But in an image, say, of a person, you might want to have the eyes and the lips get sharper, but not necessarily the model's skin, because that will just sharpen, you know, the, the things in people's skin, pores and hairs and things like that. Stuff that the model probably doesn't want sharper. And so we can actually use the masking slider to turn off that sharpening in certain places. Again, for an image like this, we don't really need it because we want that sharpening across the entire photo. Now, we'll look at masking in a later video, but for now, that's our simple sharpening workflow. And for most photos where you want to sharpen the whole thing, this works great. Again, to review, we start with a mount, we take it all the way down and all the way up, and we start it at zero once we've done that and seen the range. We start it at zero and we bring it up until the details just pop. And as soon as they pop, that's where you stop and that's where you leave it. Then you move on down to detail. Now detail, the higher it gets, the smaller and smaller details in the image are gonna get sharper. So you wanna get it as high as you possibly can without the noise in the background getting too sharp. So you start it at zero, you bring it up, as soon as you see the noise start to pop, back it off a little bit, and that's where you leave it. And again, it should be mentioned again, you always wanna zoom in to one to one when you do this in order to get an accurate representation of what the sharpness is in the photograph. Now, the fun thing to do at the end is once you get this all done, at the top of the detail panel, there's this little light switch over here to the left of the word detail. And if we turn that on and off, that's gonna give us a little before and after. So here's the before and there's the after. And we can see that the mountain lion's snout and eyes and hair looks much, much, much sharper. It's awesome. If you're having a hard time seeing it in the video, make sure you're on the, uh, the HD setting. Make sure you're on the highest resolution you can stream and that should give you a better idea of what's going on. If not, try it on your own computer and see what you get. But it's pretty darn noticeable, pretty cool, before and after. So again, very simple, two sliders can make a huge, huge, huge impact on the sharpness of your images. If you liked this video, I'd love you guys if you hit a thumbs up button. Uh, if you have a question, leave it in the comment section down below. I'll be getting to those questions. Also, we're putting out weekly videos, so if you guys wanna subscribe for more content, that would be awesome. Uh, and like I said, we'll be putting out a future video on more advanced sharpening techniques like using the masking slider to deactivate and turn off sharpening in certain areas of your photographs.